The scholars of Islam with the support of verses from the Holy Quran have recommended the act of visiting graves, especially the visitation of the Holy Prophet's grave and the pious servants of Allah. And they consider this act to be virtuous and pious. However, Wahhabis do not consider the principle of this act haram, yet they consider and declare that the journey towards the ziyara of awliya Allah to be unlawful and haram. This is why my esteemed guest and I have dedicated tonight's episode to clear up the confusion that revolve around this topic. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the fifth episode of Life from Karbala Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmad Ali. For the respected viewers who didn't get the chance to view the previous episodes, they can log into our YouTube channel at Imam Hussein 3 TV and uh, view the previous episodes. But without further ado, let me welcome my dear guest who has joined me over the past few episodes, Sayyid Hussein Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Assalamu How are you? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, the electricity is going off and on today. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil, uh, inshallah, uh, we don't have inshallah. an issue. Uh, but, Sayyidna, uh, this topic is somewhat related to yesterday's topic, which is intercession. And um, especially when we talk about, uh, you know, visiting graves and why do people visit graves. But first, we have to see that is visiting graves good? And what's the philosophy behind it? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. اللهم صل. First of all, uh, the habit or the tradition of visiting cemeteries and graves. Hmm. This is not a tradi new tradition. Hmm. This is not something new in Islam. Hmm. If you notice, in every culture, in every nation the tradition of visiting cemeteries and graves exists. Yes. It's, it's, it's a known habit. Mm -hmm. Muslims are not the first people to do it. Followers yes. of Ahlul Bayt are not the, the first, first people, people to do it. Us, yes. um, in fact, the Quran even alludes to this, that it was a habit. <laughs> that even when you go to the cemeteries, you're still arguing over who has more graves. This tribe has more graves or that tribe has more graves because it's a matter of number. Yes. Our numbers are more or your numbers are more. Mm -hmm. So it shows that it was a habit even, even during the days of Jahiliyyah among the Arab. Mm -hmm. It was normal for people to visit uh, graves, to, you know, to honor their family members, uh, to go and remember them, to uh, honor certain figures, certain mm -hmm. legends, yes. war heroes, mm -hmm. uh, martyrs. In, in wars that fell that fell in battles that mm -hmm. fell in wars that died defending their country yes um, even in the United States of America you will find the national cemetery of so and so yes uh, especially their martyrs of the army yeah they, they, they pay a lot of respect for, for the martyrs yes. in the armies those cemeteries are, are well uh, you know are well taken care of, taken care yeah. of they're respected anyhow now before before we talk about the permissibility of visiting graves is it permissible is it not per permissible yeah. is it encouraged or is it not <coughs> does it have any purpose or is it completely vain yeah you see that visiting graves and visiting cemeteries has you know plays important roles it does number one by visiting a cemetery, you're honoring the dead. You're mm -hmm. paying respect. Yes. <coughs> you're paying respect to the dead. You're honoring them. You're respecting them. That's a good quality. It is. You don't just remember someone when they're alive. Mm -hmm. And then when they die, you, you erase them, them yeah. from your memory. No, even after they're dead, you still go and visit them. You remember them. You remember their achievements, their, ac their accomplishments. This is one way of you know, paying back a person, not only remembering him in his life, but you remember him after his death. So this is one. It's one way of honoring a person. Mm -hmm. You honor him not just during his life, but after his death. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's a lesson. A person who goes and walks into a cemetery and he sees graves all around him, 
and he reads the tombstones. Yeah. This person died a year ago. That person died two years ago, three years ago. Three days ago. Three days ago. This person died at the age of 90, but this person died at the age of 70. Another person died at the age of 20. Another person died at the age of 16. That's a lesson to us. This is a lesson that death is for everyone. Yes. Death is not just for these people inside these graves. Death could come to me, it could come to you, it could come to anyone. Men, women, children, whether you're American or African or Iraqi or Iranian or from any country you are, every country has a cemetery. Mm. All countries have cemeteries. Every Everyone city died. has a cemetery. Every city has a cemetery. This is a powerful lesson. It is. No matter how many times you hear that humans are mortal, they will die, they will not live forever, this life is not meant to be eternal. These words, they might have an effect, they might not have an effect. But when you go and see a cemetery with your own eyes. Yeah, it's something different. It's different. Yes. Especially if you visit a cemetery twice. Yeah. You visit a cemetery once, and then you go after a year, you see that the graves have increased. Uh, you know, sometimes when I'm in Iran, in Qom, I go and visit the graves of my uh, grandparents from my mother's side mm -hmm. in, uh, in Jannat al Baqiya. May Allah have mercy on them. Thank you very much. May Allah bless the deceased loved ones from your family. Allah uh, I remember when they first died and we buried them in that cemetery, they were in a room. They were by themselves mm -hmm. with maybe two other people. Yes. A year after that, the graves increased. Yeah. The year after that, they increased. Now there's no single empty space in that room. It's full of graves. And then there's pictures of the deceased. There's old people. There's young, there's young people. There's lay people. There's scholars. There's even marajah. In that room. There's women. There's children. There's doctors. There's Iraqis, Iranians. All sorts of people. This is a powerful lesson yes. that death is not just for others. Death is for me too. Yes. Just like these people died, I will die as well. It's a wake-up call. Going to a cemetery is definitely a wake-up call. It's a reminder that this life is not eternal. Mm -hmm. Rather, there's another life that is eternal and we will soon have to leave. Three, going to a cemetery uh, can be inspirational yes, definitely. and motivational that okay death is for everyone that means death is for me as well yeah. if I die what have I done what good deeds have I done how many bad deeds have I done it gets you to work it gets you to start working for your akhirah that sooner or later our time will be up as well and we don't know is it next year is it 10 years from now is it 10 days from now yeah. Allahu alam. Allahu alam. but the point is that we have to be ready going to a cemetery and visiting graves gives us that wake up call mm -hmm. and be ready prepare your actions at any moment you'll be called do you have enough deeds do you have enough actions that when you go you're satisfied or not that's emotion it's uh, it's motivational it's it's inspirational and it inspires us to work for m more for the akhirah and reduces our attachment to the dunya it's, it's it helps world, us yeah. fix our akhlaq fix our behavior fix our actions and deeds. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa yes. has been quoted and these narrations, I found them in Sunni sources of mm -hmm. hadith. I didn't find them in our books. But nevertheless, yani the meaning that they give is a nice meaning. Rasulullah says in a couple of narrations, he says, قَدْ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةُ الْقُبُورِ فَزُورُوهَا I prevented you from visiting graves formerly, but now I allow you to go and visit graves. Because by visiting graves, it's a lesson. Mm -hmm. Now why uh, why did Rasulullah forbid, if this is accurate, if this is accurate that Rasulullah did indeed ban visiting graves, but then he allowed. Some scholars, they analyze this. They said that, you know, these new converts to Islam, because the early Muslims, they were all converts. No one was born into Islam. They were all converts. They still had uh, the habits of the days of Jahiliyyah. During yeah. the days of Jahiliyyah, when they would visit graves and cemeteries, they would wail, they would cry, uh, they would speak nonsense. 
their their mourning was was not normal. So Islam said, you know what? For a while, don't don't let them visit graves. Let them learn how to cope with death, how to cope with sadness, how to cope with depression. Once they've learned all these, then we'll let them go back and visit their loved ones in the cemeteries. So some scholars say this is the reason why Rasulullah banned visiting graves for a while, and then he allowed it. Mm-hmm. Visiting cemeteries and graves it has a lesson. And another hadith, تُزَهِّدُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَتُذَكِّرُ الْآخِرَةِ it reduces the attach our attachment to dunya, and increases our, uh, and it reminds us of the akhirah. And another hadith, قَدْ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَرْقُ الْقَلْبِ The heart will soften. Our hearts are are cold. Yeah. But when you go to a cemetery, it softens. وَتَدْمَعُ الْعَيْنِ You know when you see so many dead people, your relatives, your friends. The, the deceased loved ones you begin crying the, so, the heart softens sometimes our hearts become uh, stone cold yeah they become they become as as hard as stones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants our hearts to become soft. uh, softer because when you have a soft heart you will be soft with people definitely when you have a cold heart when you have a, a heart made of stone you will treat people in a harsh manner وَتُذَكِّرُوا الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَقُولُوا حَجْرًا mm-hmm. Thus, for these reasons, visiting cemeteries is a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. It, w- with all these benefits, it's a lesson. It's honoring the dead. It's motivational. It's inspirational. It, incre- it decreases our attachment to this life. And, and it reminds us of the next life. Vis- visiting cemeteries is a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad thing. Okay, so what I learned from, or what I understood from what you've uh, just provided is that visiting graves um, it is somewhat uh, ethical it has eth- ethical influences Absolutely. and also it's important for moral education but when we go into the Quran the v- the narrations you provided they somewhat contradict what the Quran says uh, I'll narrate uh, a verse from chapter 19 verse 84 where Allah SWT says and never offer prayers for any one of them who dies and do not st- stand by his grave another verse in chapter 19 uh, also has the same meaning the prophet has a narration that says do not stand on grave for burial or pilgrimage so don't don't even stand on their graves and don't even go visit their graves so can you refute this assertion yes or not uh, refute the verses but provide uh, explanations for these verses because some people do uh, refute this and for a point, they actually have a point because the Quran is is stating that do not even visit their graves. Sure. When we come to the Quran, we see that the Quran has a a clear position. Mm-hmm. First of all, on the permissibility of visiting graves. First, let's state that those who you know uh, they took a stand against visiting graves are Wahhabis and Wahhabism. Yeah. Before that, no one was anti-visiting graves. None, no Muslim. But how do, why do we see in the Quran? Huh. Well, I'll get to that in a second. I'll get to that in a second. Okay. In fact, this verse encourages us to visit graves. Really? Yes. I'll explain it in a second. Well, we'll see how. We'll see how. No one had a problem with visiting graves up until Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab yeah. and, and his movement and his movement and his followers. That's why when you go to uh, for example, to Medina, when we go and visit Jannah al baqiyah they make you, you know, rush yeah. in your ziyara. You're, you're not allowed to stand. First of all, they don't allow women to go into cemeteries because there's a ban on women visit as if, as if it's haram for women to visit I don't cemeteries. They and even men, they have to quickly, you know, pass through. Don't stand. Don't recite Quran. Don't recite ziyara. Don't recite anything. Just pass by cook shirk. And they call it shirk. They call it, you know, it's as if. You know, just going to the cemetery, say Assalamu ala la ilaha ahli la ilaha illallah, kayfa wajatum qaw la ilaha illallah, min ahli. Say a couple of sentences and get out. While we say that the Quran doesn't say this. The verse that you mentioned, Surah At Tawbah, yeah. verse 84, 
ولا تصلي على أحد منهم مات أبدا ولا تقم على قبره إنهم كفروا إنهم كفروا بالله ورسوله وماتوا وهم فاسقون The verse says and do not pray over their bodies ever and do not stand over his grave they are disbelievers the verse is speaking about who? the disbelievers disbelievers and specifically munafiqeen hypocrites if we look at the context of the verse yes in Surah At-Tawbah Surah At-Tawbah a lot of it is about hypocrites mm -hmm. the verses before <coughs> the verses after it's speaking about hypocrites that don't pray over the body of a hypocrite and don't stand over his grave meaning what? Meaning if it was a believer mm -hmm. Then stand over his grave Stand over his grave mm -hmm. This means that it was the tradition of Rasulullah To pray over the bodies of believers And stand over the graves Not just stand over the graves Doesn't mean stand Don't remain over his grave لا تقوم means don't remain It doesn't mean don't stand يعني If we were to sit on a grave Or next to a grave for a while That's iqama. لا تقوم comes from iqama. Iqam, iqam means reside, mm -hmm. remain for a while. This means that Rasulullah, was, it was his habit of praying over the bodies of the believers and residing, remaining close to the graves of the believers. But Allah made an exception, not the hypocrites. As for the hypocrites, don't pray over their bodies and don't stand over the grave or don't remain close to their grave. Mm -hmm. You see? So the verse is actually showing us that it is permissible because the verse is speaking about hypocrites. That means if the person is not a hypocrite, Rasulullah can pray over his body. Rather, he should pray over his body. Number two, he can stand over his grave. He could mm -hmm. sit next to his grave. In fact, that was a habit. See, th this is how we should read the verse. Mm -hmm. We should look at it in its context. Mm -hmm. You see context. that the verse completely gives the other meaning, yeah. that it's permissible. This is one. Two. In fact, the Qur'an tells us that it's even permissible to visit the graves of non-believers. Even the worst of non-believers. The worst of non-believers. Really? Yes. So we're just, we're not allowed to visit hypocrites. But now we can visit non-believers? Yes. Hmm. First of all, the verse says, وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِهِ You, Ya Rasulullah, you don't go to their graves. Because when Rasulullah goes to the grave of a hypocrite, it's seen as what? Yeah. As an endorsement, as a means of support. But if someone normal like me goes, who said it's forbidden? Rasulullah, Rasulullah shouldn't go and pray over their body. So this is speaking to Rasulullah, This not is us. speaking to Rasulullah, yes. The ban. As for the permissibility, it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. But for the ban, وَلَا تَقُمْ أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ You don't go on their grave, the graves of hypocrites. It's not speaking to us. Mm -hmm. For us, there's no ban. Why is there a ban on Rasulullah? Because his visiting the grave of a hypocrite is seen as an endorsement, yes. as encouragement. The Quran, in fact, even encourages us to visit the grave of non-believers. Really? And the worst of non-believers. Really? How? How? Surah Yunus, verse 92. The verse is speaking about Fir'aun. Ya Fir'aun, we have preserved your body so that you remain a lesson for others. What, what sort of lesson? Allah preserved his body. Well, I didn't get to see his body. Yeah. Only some people saw his body. For everyone after you, you remain a lesson. Mm -hmm. That this is what happens to a, a dictator and a pharaoh like you. Well, I can't see his body, but I could see his grave. The grave of Fir'aun remains a symbol. That, oh, people come, this Fir'aun, فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمْ الْأَعْلَى The one who would say, I am the God of gods. Wow. The result is that he's, he's in a grave right now. Come and look. Let it be a lesson for everyone. So even visiting the grave of someone like Fir'aun is recommended as a lesson. Not for blessings, of course. Yeah, definitely. We're not going for a blessing from the grave of Fir'aun. But as a lesson. So even the grave of Fir'aun, it's recommended to visit. Yes. To, to receive a lesson 
to learn to be taught. You see? So where in the Quran does it say that visiting graves is forbidden? Or it's that it's shirk? Or that it's not good? On the contrary, we mm -hmm. see we see the opposite. We see the opposite. We see the opposite. Furthermore, I'd like to just mention two narrations from Sunni sources mm -hmm. about visiting graves, about the permissibility of visiting graves. The first narration is in As Sunan al Kubra lil Bayhaqi, well known Sunni scholar. An Abi Huraira, the, the narrator is Abu Huraira. And the Nabi at al Maqbara faqal, Assalamu alaykum dara qawmin mu'mineen, wa inna insha'Allah bikum lahiqoon. The Rasulullah came to a cemetery and he said, Peace be upon the, uh, the, the house or the, the world of the believers, we, God willing, will follow you. We'll follow in your footsteps. And another hadith in Sahih Muslim. Mm -hmm. Zara nabi qabra ummihi fabaka wa abka man hawla. Rasulullah visited the grave of his mother. He cried and he made others cry. Thumma qal, istaadhantu rabbi fi an azura qabriha. I asked Allah to give me, grant, grant me permission to visit her grave. Fa'adhina li. And he, he granted me the permission. Fazuru al qubur. So visit, I'm ordering yes. you, visit graves. فَأَنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُكُمُ الْمَوْتِ Visit graves because it will remind you of death. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't see anywhere where visiting graves in itself is banned. Not for men, not, not for, for women, women, not for children. Mm -hmm. None of the narrations say visit for five minutes, walk quickly, don't sit, don't... No, so none Allah of this. over his mother's grave. The, the, the narrations don't say don't cry. Rasulullah was crying over the, the grave of his mother. Mm -hmm. Amen. What more do you want than this? What more do you want? The verses are clear. And these narrations in Sunan al-Bayhaqi and Sahih Muslim are clear. And there's a lot of narrations. But for time's sake, I only brought these two narrations. Inshallah. Uh, we'll continue the discussion after the break, Sayyidina, if you want, inshallah. Uh, so respected the viewers, before uh, we'll go into a break, we talked about... Uh, why is visiting the grave uh, important and what benefits do we gain from visiting graves but inshallah we'll continue the discussion after this short break you'll be provided with live footages from inside the holy shrine of Muhammad so to that we'll be back shortly Allahumma 
Welcome back. Hope you inshallah enjoyed uh, those live footages from inside our master, Imam Al Hussein Al Islam, from inside his holy shrine. Uh, but before the break, we cleared up the misconception regarding the people who, uh, you know, refute the fact and the concept of visiting graves uh, and how some state that whoever visits a grave is a monotheist and is considered as mushrik. Uh, but back uh, to discussion with my dear guest. Uh, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini, how do you say that? Welcome back. Allah uh, Khalikum, inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidna, uh, a few months ago I asked uh, a scholar or a sheikh and I asked him the same question. I asked him about the permissibility of visiting uh, the grave of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know that we talked about visiting graves in general, but now we want to make it nearer and talk about the grave of Rasulullah and he provided a narration that talks about I'll just narrate the narration it says that uh, that talks about in his life not after his demise now is it permissible to visit the grave of Rasulullah after his demise this narration talks about his life mm. during his life what about after first of all um, why, why are we you know, discussing the permissibility of visiting the Prophet's grave? Because it's a matter of controversy. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of Muslims that come to Hajj and Umrah. They only come to Mecca and they don't come to Medina. They don't come to Medina. I know many, especially from the Gulf countries, especially Wahhabis from Saudi Arabia, from some parts of Saudi Arabia, uh, Kuwait, Qatar, mm -hmm. Bahrain, where there is Wahhabi communities. During Hajj, they come. They they come to Mecca. They don't come to Medina. They don't visit Rasulullah. Out of this this misconception mm -hmm. that visiting the grave of Rasulullah is not permissible, or if it's permissible, it's it has no value. Innovation. It's an innovation. It's bid'ah. It has no value whatsoever. And they narrate. Mm -hmm. They say there is a narration. The narration is by Abu Hurairah. That Rasulullah has stated, لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى إلا إلى ثلاثة مساجد. مسجد هذا ومسجد الحرام والمسجد الأقصى. That you do not travel to any mosque. Mm -hmm. Traveling to any mosque is forbidden. Or do not travel to any mosque. Unless it's the following three mosques. My mosque, the Prophet's mosque, Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, Masjid al-Aqsa in uh, Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. So they say this means that it is not permissible to travel and it is it is not permissible to travel to visit the Prophet's grave. If you want, visit to pray in the Prophet and the Prophet's mosque, but don't mm -hmm. visit his grave because traveling to visit his grave is not permissible. When we come to the narration, first of all, if if this hadith is accurate mm -hmm. and it was stated by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this is number one. Mm -hmm. Who said he even stated this? Yes, he's trying to say that all mosques are the same, except these three. That means you don't need to travel from one place to another for a mosque. Your local mosque is enough, mm -hmm. unless it's one of these three mosques. Masjid al-Nabawi, al-Masjid al-Haram, al-Masjid al-Aqsa. These three mosques, it's worth traveling for. The others, 
all the other mosques are the same. But is he saying لا تشد الرحال? He's, you know, forbidding. No, he's not forbidding. No mm-hmm. need, no need to travel to other mosques. Plus, he's talking about mosques. He's not talking about ziyara. He's not talking about the grave of Rasulullah. He said لا تشد الرحال إلا إلى ثلاثة مساجد. Do not travel unless for these three mosques. Meaning, don't travel to other mosques unless it's these three. It's not forbidden. He's trying to say that there's no need to travel to other mosques. Because the other mosques are all equal. Mm-hmm. No one is more significant than the other. Except if it's these three. It has nothing to do with the ziyarah of Rasulullah or the grave of Rasulullah. The hadith is completely misunderstood. Furthermore, the verse that you mentioned, it, it's, a, it's a verse, it's not a narration. It's a verse, yes. Yes, it's a verse. Did I say narration? Yes, you said narration. Oh, sorry for that. The verse says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَابًا رَحِيمًا Amen. And we talked about this yesterday or the day before. Yes. When we talked about intercession. Those who oppress themselves and they come to you. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ They come to you. They come to you. They come to you before your death or after your death. The verse is general. The verse doesn't say they come to you while you're alive. While you're alive or after your death, they come to you, they visit you. But isn't isn't this intended during his life? No. No. Yes. Rasulullah would be visited during his life, but he was also visited after his life. Mm-hmm. So why can't this verse apply to those who visit Rasulullah after his death as well? They come to you. They come to your grave. But especially since we have mm-hmm. a hadith that says Ashadu anna hurmataka mayyitan ka hurmataka hayya Your honor and your dignity Dead mm-hmm. is the same honor and dignity that you have when you're alive Alive, yeah But the, the rest of the, the verse it says Fastaghfirullah Fastaghfirullah They seek forgiveness Wastaghfirullahum al-Rasul And Rasulullah would seek forgiveness for them mm-hmm. Yes, that's possible But isn't he dead? He's dead but he could still seek forgiveness his body is dead, but not his soul. His soul is not dead. His soul is not dead. Rasulullah's body is dead, mm-hmm. but his soul is not dead. Rasulullah says salam. He, he, he replies to our salam. He prays for the people. Mm-hmm. And if there is any obscurity, if there is you know any confusion, yes, listen to this hadith. Okay. In Sunan Abi Dawood, mm-hmm. one of the six main sources of hadith. Mm-hmm. In the Sunni school of thought. Yes. An Rasulullah. Ma min ahadin yusallimu alay illa radda Allah ruhi hatta arudda alayhi salam. Whoever says salam, and it doesn't say a Muslim, even if I'm Muslim, whoever says salam upon me, Allah will bring back my soul into my body for me to repeat, to, to reply to his salam. Mm-hmm. Isn't he dead? Then he says, Wa alaykum as Yes. This is in, in Sunan Abi Dawood. So if he could say, Wa alaykum as Ma min ahadan yusallamu alay. Yusallamu alay. You could be far away or you could be next to his grave. Mm-hmm. That be, and most likely, who says salam upon Rasulullah? When they're next to him. When they're next to him. Mm-hmm. How about when we pray? We say salam. We also say salam in prayer. This is general. You could be far away, you could be close to Rasulullah, mm-hmm. and you're saying your salam to him. My point is that even though he's dead, but he says, Wa alaykum as If he says, Wa alaykum as while he's dead, he could also, Wa yastaghfiru lahum al rasul. You could seek forgiveness for them. You could ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive these people. Why can't mm-hmm. he? Why can't he? And another hadith, Sallu alayya. These are in Sunni narrations. Sallu alayya fa inna salatakum tablughani. حيث كنتم send peace upon me your salam will reach me this is general while I'm alive or while I'm dead even clear this, this hadith has no, <laughs> no you know no questions around yeah. it yeah and Abdullah bin Umar mm-hmm. Abdullah the son of Umar bin Khattab yes he said قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله من زار قبري وجبت له شفاعتي Wow. He who visits my grave, my shafa'ah, my intercession will be wajib upon him. 
meaning I will definitely intercede on his behalf. Manzara Qabri. Does it get any clearer than this? Mm -hmm. This is from Abdullah ibn Umar. Abdullah ibn Umar is highly respected in the Sunni school of thought. Yes. He's one of their top figures, one of their top jurists. In another hadith, in Wafa al Wafa, Wafa al Wafa, Man Hajja an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man Hajja walam yazurni faqad jafani. Wow. He who comes to Hajj but does not visit me, he's. Uh, He's, he's disrespected me. He's hurt me. Wow. He's pained me. Jafani. So if these narrations do exist within uh, their traditions and their, uh, you know, their schools of thought, why do we see them putting you know, a, a burden right near the Prophet's grave yes. and not allowing people to, to reach the grave? Unfortunately, uh, some things are done you know, not for academic reasons or because there's proof, mm -hmm. but because of stubbornness. Because the Shia want to do this, we'll forbid them. Because the Shia, Shia. Because the Shia, and it's not just the Shia, sent. It's not just the Shia. Mm -hmm. Today, you will find many people from Malaysia, from Indonesia, from Turkey, from yeah. Africa. Yeah. They save up their money just to come and visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this has been a tradition for centuries. Yes. For centuries, Muslims who come to Mecca, all of them would come to Medina. But it became a, a Wahhabi habit not to come to Medina. They not even to visit tried the to, to, They tried to, to bomb his, his dome. Is, is that true? I as, don't know. Allahu uh, Alam. As I've read, and the person was somehow. Yes, we, stuck heard, on we top. heard of a rumor that uh, uh, the dome of Rasulullah wants to be demolished and the grave of Rasulullah to be transported to the Baqiya. Take him out from the mosque and put him into the Baqiya. Really? So that the mosque will be free of uh, bodies and graves and so forth. Forgetting that there's other graves right next to, next to Rasulullah. Why they want to take out the bodies of Rasulullah. Will they the take out the other graves as well? Or is the disrespect only meant to Rasulullah? Anyhow, Muslims, millions of Muslims, billions of Muslims have been visiting the grave of Rasulullah from the dawn of Islam until now. No one said this is shirk, no one said that, that this is uh, disbelief, that this is a bid'ah, this is uh, innovation, this is kufr. No, this is a, a way of honoring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yes, definitely. The Prophet who served this nation sincerely for so many years, is it that big of a deal? You can't go and visit his grave, send your peace and blessings upon him. And in Western countries, graves of heroes and, and leaders are, are marked. You know, uh, their graves become museums. People go and visit them and pay tribute to them. And Abraham Lincoln. Respect. Abraham Lincoln, the, the Lincoln Memorial, Washington Memorial. Yeah. You know, leaders are, are always honored and yes. respected. Why is it that we in Islam, we have to degrade our leaders? And oppress our prophet. And oppress our prophet and disrespect him and not have respect for his grave or the graves of his of his progeny as we'll talk about in a, in a couple of minutes inshallah so. inshallah Sayyidina we do see uh, so but now that we can assume that the evidence that, that you provided prove the fact of visiting the permissibility of visiting the graves in general as well as visiting the grave of Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa, wa sallam uh, but what about building over the graves of uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad or uh, the Imams or anyone like mosques, buildings, and, and domes. Uh, I'll give you the chance to answer this, but you've mentioned the narration that that should rahal illa thalath, and we do see this. This they take this as a reason to demolish the rest of the graves or the rest of the, the sanctuaries or the, the the shrines that we see in Syria and in Iraq and you know what ISIS is doing and the, the radicals or the extremists who have come before ISIS, they just demolish the shrines. So I go back to the question, is it okay to build domes and mosques and buildings over graves? This is also one of the issues that uh, Wahhabis have with the rest of the, rest of the Muslims, mm -hmm. not just Shias, not just followers of Ahl Bayt, but all Muslims. We have Prophet Yunus who, or Noah, 
the one who Yunus, other no, not Nuh. Nuh is buried in Najaf. Yes, sorry. Yunus yes. and others. Yeah. You know, for for centuries, mm -hmm. Muslims, you know, visited graves. They built buildings on top of graves. They built mosques. The uh, you know, the graves of prominent prophets, prominent Sahaba, the the four Imams in Baqiya, yeah. in Medina, the project, the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, along with the wives of Rasulullah, some of the Sahaba, uh, the uncle of Rasulullah. You know, th there is Al Abbas, Amman Nabi, Al Baqiya was full of domes and buildings and mosques. As soon as the Wahhabis came, they demolished the Baqiya. Why? Because no one should build on top of graves. Graves should be, you know, leveled with the earth. What did they base this ideology on? I will say it in a minute. In Samarra, mm -hmm. they destroyed the, yes. uh, the Qubba of al Askariyin to destroy the grave. Hujr ibn Adi in Damascus, Yes. they dug his grave and they dis decided to demolish his grave site. In, in Mosul, several grave sites yes. of prophets, prominent prophets, were destroyed. They based this ridiculous philosophy, this ridiculous ideology on a hadith that is completely misunderstood. This hadith is stated by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi to Imam Ali when he sent him to Yemen. He told him what to do, do this, do that, do this, do that. And then he said, Wala qabran illa sawayta. Don't leave a grave unless Wala qabran illa sawayta. Sawayta, they thought that Rasulullah was saying to Imam Ali that level down all graves. If you see any grave that is built, there's a building over it, level it down with the ground, Sawaita. But this is not the meaning of Sawaita. Graves, some graves, they, they would call it Tasneem al qubur Graves were built like this, half a dome. Not a big building. On top of the grave, there's a half yeah. dome. Rasulullah was telling him, don't make it an arch like, don't make it an arch, level it. Make it make it square. Don't make it arch. Wow. This is the meaning. Meaning, don't make it arch like tasneem. Make it square. Make it flat. Yeah, make it flat. Ahsent. Make it flat. That's the meaning. Doesn't mean destroy buildings and destroy the mosques. So and I destroy the domes. I don't understand. So they're taking the words of Rasulullah Ali, yet they refute the literature of Ali. What ideology and they have the hatred for Imam Ali and his children. Furthermore, when we read the Quran, we see that the Quran, first of all, does not say, you know, does not condemn building over graves. On the contrary, the Quran mm -hmm. encourages building over graves. Yeah. We see an, inst an instance, Surah Al Kahf, verse 21, regarding Ahl Al Kahf. Yeah. Ahl Al Kahf, the people of the cave. After sleeping for 309 years, or I, I don't know how many years, they came out of the cave and they discovered that time had passed. They came back it's into totally the grave. Yeah, yeah. The Quran, you know, the, the cave is closed and, and the Quran gives us a picture that they died. They remained in the cave and they died in the cave. Now see what the Quran says. فَقَالُوا ibnu alayhim bunyanan build over them let's make this a monument these people are heroes the people of the cave the cave became their grave site their burial site build build a monument for them wow. these people are heroes we will build a mosque for them Wow. Over their grave site, we will build a mosque. So they leave this verse, which is absolutely 100% correct. Ha and correct and, and clear, clear and obvious that they're building mosque and building a building, a monument over the grave site, over the burial site of Ahl al -Kab, And they go to a hadith that is completely misunderstood. And uh, uh, coincidentally, I visited, I visited this place. Mm -hmm. 
this cave is in Amman, in modern day Jordan. In really? Amman, yes. A couple of years ago, I was in Jordan and I was told that the cave of the people of the cave is here in the outskirts of Amman. I went and I visited it. It's a beautiful place. The cave. Uh, Are they still in there or no? I couldn't tell. There is graves in there. There are graves. And there is there's writing, not but, in Arabic, in Assyrian. Some scholars say that they're still alive. Yes, we have some narrations. How accurate are these narrations? I don't know. But uh, there are some narrations that say that they are still alive and they will come with, uh, with Imam al-Mahdi. Uh, yeah, yeah, However, there are others that believe they died. They died in that cave and that cave became their burial site. There were graves. I saw graves in that, in that cave. Is it theirs? Is it not theirs? And there's a mosque. Right next to the cave, there's a mosque. The Quran gives us the assumption that they died because the Quran doesn't tell us what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's giving us the assumption that they died and they wanted to build over their grave site. Otherwise, where did they go? Why did they want to build? Why were they building them a monument? Where did they disappear? So obviously they died. The Quran gives us the image that they died mm -hmm. and they were building. Even if they didn't die, even if they did, did the people assume that they died or no? Yeah. The people assumed that they died and they were wanting to build a mosque over them. If this act was unacceptable, why mention in the Quran? Definitely. So even if they didn't die, the people assumed they died and they were building a mosque and a monument for them. This in itself, when, when the Quran mentions something like this, it means it's encouraging it. Definitely. It's not haram, it's not shirk, it's not bid'ah. But where are the ones to read the Quran with open eyes? Definitely, and not with cherry open pick. open hearts, and not cherry pick, and open mm -hmm. with, a, with an open mind and an open heart, and read these verses and realize that their actions does not conform to the Holy Quran. Hopefully, hopefully we can, you know, open up our minds and, and you know, clear up all the misconceptions. But thank you very much, Sayyidina, for joining us tonight. And, you know, I, I salute you. Uh, for uh, the evidence that you provided and uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen we did clear up the confusion regarding uh, this uh, concept uh, so respective viewers thank you very much for tuning in tonight may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us uh, you know uh, free minds to uh, understand what the quran has to say and what ahl bayt has to say uh, regarding this topic thank you very much for tuning in wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh